Yo, what's going on guys? Lee Minette here. Today, we're gonna be finally, finally doing the movement tutorial. And I'm very, very excited because the reason why we're doing this today, something very, very special came. Thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers. I love all of you. You guys are the best. All right, we're gonna start off with going over my peripherals and settings and anything that you guys have kind of been like asking for for however long that I've been holding off on this movement. It's sorry, I'm sorry for holding off on it for so long, guys. It's been seven months. I know. I'm sorry. Okay, but we're gonna go over all the peripherals and everything that you guys have been asking for, um, from my monitor, to keyboard, mouse, mouse pad, everything. We're gonna go over it right about now. All right, I just want to say a massive massive shout out to ben q and mobius for sending out this monitor this is actually the first peripheral we'll be going over as this is the monitor that i've been gaming on for the last month actually i've been gaming on it since the sponsored stream about a month ago and i wasn't expecting to like this monitor so much but i completely swapped it out for my other one because that's how much more like responsive and just clear and colorful the images are um but this is the monitor right here it is the uh ex 270 qm model uh, it is a 1440p 27 inch one millisecond response time um, sadly it was on sale for a hundred dollars off, but it is back up to market price at $800, but they have a ton of other budget monitors. If this is in, in your, your price range, if you go up to their gaming series on their site, uh, their site will be linked down in the description, by the way, everything in this video will be linked down in the description. Um, you could scroll through and look at what all of the stuff does in the monitor, all the, you know, the tech inside of the monitors, everything. Um, these, these are insane. Like the, the specs on these are ridiculous. If I had a monitor like this back in the day, I would probably cry, but th this is insane. Um, they have some more budget friendly options from like 130. This is like a 24 inch, uh, 144 Hertz. Uh, I think this is a 240 Hertz, more budget friendly option. Um, but yeah, they have a ton of stuff. They have curved, they have flat screen. Like I said, go check them out. Link will be in the description. Mobius, BenQ, thank you so much. Sorry for the delay on this video and this part. Uh, I know you guys wanted this out much sooner, but thank you guys. Check out BenQ. Show him some love. I love you guys. All right. Next set of peripherals. Uh, mouse pad, mouse, and keyboard. Um, mouse pad, I am usually always running a sky pad. Lately, I haven't because it's so hot and my arm gets stuck to it. Uh, that's probably the only the diss I can say about sky pad. Their mouse pads are beautiful. Sticky in the summer because of the humidity. God, I love Ohio. Um, mouse we're using Logitech Superlight. I really still enjoy this mouse because of how tall the scroll wheel is compared to my uh, my Pulsar X2. I like the Pulsar X2's feeling better in the weight, but I think the scroll wheel is just not as good as the Superlight scroll wheel. Just feels better on this. Um, and the next thing, and probably the absolute most important thing, and I'll have this link down in the description as well to purchase this keyboard. Um, the Wooting 60 HE. This keyboard is absolutely insane. The features that it packs is nuts for the price. This keyboard costs 180, and now that might seem like a ridiculous price because it kind of is for a keyboard. Um, but the things you get with this, um, it's not a hot swappable or like interchangeable keyboard. I think you can mod it or whatever, but it's the settings that are built into the software, and that is the actuation points that you can set to whatever you want. So right here, as you'll see, I have all my WASD keys set to. 0.4 so that makes it super duper responsive i don't have it at 0.1 i think it's a little too much um plus i play counter-strike quite a lot so i don't like having that responsive and i bump it and mess up my shot but yes yeah, so you'll see like my q or my stim is 1.5 my my loot is really easy to hit or like it's just everything f is easy to hit like all this stuff you'll see that these are my super glide uh actuations i use 1.1 and 1.6 on my space bar i also turn my space bar the complete opposite direction i have turned it the opposite way essentially making it more aligned with the v key it helps with super glides um that is the first feature i'm not even done there's another feature that's absolutely insane um we'll start off with the tycon mode because this is like the one that's not really insane if you turn this on it just makes it more responsive but you're gonna lose a little bit of the rgb effects you won't be able to have like crazy rainbow effects you'll just have like a static kind of more dull color um but the second and crazy feature is the rapid trigger and what this allows for is that when you're letting off of a key, I can't really show you too well, but when you're letting off of the key, you do not let need to let it go up to a specific point to put it back down to click again. You can click it, lift it up 0.15 millimeters. That's what I have it set to then click it back down, or you can, you know, do it in anything in that frame. Like, it just gives you so much more like it's so responsive. I can't tell you. It feels like you're playing horizon on every character. That's how good this keyboard feels. If that makes any sense and makes you want to buy it, get it. It is an unbelievable purchase. Definitely worth your money. Wooting, you guys make an awesome product. Thank you guys so much for sending this out. 
about six months ago. I'm sorry for taking so long to make this. You guys are awesome. Thank you for making this product. Before we go over any text, we're gonna go through all of my settings really quick because I know you guys have been asking for this for probably like since I started playing Apex Legends. Um, these are my settings right now. My settings are a little weird. This is actually supposed to be 1.2. I'm experimenting with senses all the time. I'm I have a really weird sense range from low to high, but this is what I usually will run. Um, 1.2, something along the lines of this, or 1.6, something along the lines of this. Both of those are really good feeling to me. Um, but here are all my keybinds. Uh, things you'll need, and mandatory for this, is you'll need scroll wheel up, bound to W. Or you move forward, I need scroll wheel up, bound to that. And then for your jump, I need that bound to scroll down. If you don't have those, sorry, explaining all this stuff's going to be impossible. Also, my crouch key is V, whatever your crouch key is. Just alter that with whatever I'm saying. If I say crouch, just switch it to whatever key you're, you know, if you have control or C or you know, Y or I don't even know. You guys have some weird ass binds, but um, we'll continue scrolling through. These are all of my normal key binds. You guys can slow this down and pause it. You guys probably already saw like 90% of it because I just sat there like a brain dead bot. Just not clicking through. But these are all my graphic settings. I play on potato graphics. This game does not look any different besides the shading when you turn it to potato and a little bit of like jagged edges, but whatever. That's the matter. Um, a lot of people ask about my resolution, 1920 by 1200. That is a resolution you can only get with uh, a 1440p monitor. You cannot get that if you have a 1080p monitor. I'm sorry. This resolution is absolutely insane. If you are a content creator and you're playing on 1728 by 1080, switch to this if you have a 1440p monitor. Amazing for videos. Looks great. You'll see it. In, in this video and all my other videos it looks fantastic and it's stretch rise you'll have an advantage all that stuff um sound settings nothing and crazy um but yeah that is that's it for the settings um i sometimes run custom fov i'm not going to show you how to do that i might link a video on how to do it probably won't it's it's on youtube you'll be able to find it if you want a custom fov you can go up to like 120 and it, it's a little harder to aim on that but eh, not really worth it not gonna lie First thing we'll go over, and it's really just the most basic thing and kind of combines every other movement tech together, and that is tap strafing. This is the most popular and most used thing among keyboard and mouse players. You're going to see everybody doing this on keyboard and mouse. It's just, you know, doing 180s, redirects, stuff like that. Um, to perform this, all you got to do is do a slide jump like this. And after the slide jump, get the hang of letting off of all your inputs besides a directional input or uh, a side input, not a directional input that is. But you want to hold down a side input A or D when you're doing this, whichever way you want to turn. So say I want to take a left turn, I'll hold A. Uh, if I want to take a right turn, I'll hold D. Um, but as you're doing the slide jump, you're going to turn your mouse and scroll. A this is after you've jumped. After you've jumped, you're going to slowly turn your mouse or turn your mouse and scroll at the same time. But however fast you want to turn. So it's, it's going to depend on the how you're scrolling and how fast you're turning your mouse at the same time remember i'm letting off of my directional inputs actually i'm not even holding any keys when i do this i'm, I'm not even holding a key you can hold down a side input and it actually makes it even more violent of a tap strafe i've noticed that but if you let off you could still just do a, a normal tap strafe you don't even need to hold anything you don't want to hold w just do not hold w and you'll be completely fine on this just like that I did miss something right there. Um, I'm letting off of everything besides my crouch keys. You'll see I'm holding down crouch, and that's just to kind of like land and be able to continuously do bunny hops. You'll see me doing that a, a ton. I pretty much always am crouching. You'll see me doing it in like crazy lurch strip combos like this. I'll show you this in a little bit. Yeah, you'll see me holding down crouch. You actually don't really need to, to do it. You can just do it like without it, but it's better to do it with crouch because you preserve more momentum and you stay a faster speed without like kind of dying out. I think you can do it without it, but I, I like the feel of it when I'm crouching because I can just like, you know what I mean? Like continue sliding. I'll show you some of this stuff in a little bit. You guys are seeing me bounce all around. You're probably like, what the flizzle is that? Okay, so for the next tech we're going to be going over, uh, we're going to be going over super glides and how to do them and just all sorts of different variants. Tap strafe super glides, sideways super glides, backwards super glides like that. Um, we're just going to go over it all. I'll show you guys. I feel like this is the one thing that I truly have the most knowledge on when it comes to like a movement tech. It's the one thing that I've studied so much. And probably have the most hours practicing um so we'll jump right into it okay so to do a basic super glide it's actually fairly simple all you got to do is walk up to whatever you want to super glide you're going to climb it and at the very very tippy top of your climb like almost to the point where you're in the walking animation again you're going to hit your jump and your crouch at the same time and you'll perform a super glide uh if you're having problems super gliding try flipping your space bar upside down and like i said the wooting will honestly be the ultimate thing that helps you if you mess around with the actuation points Okay, so now that you've learned straight on super glides and you're getting more comfortable with them, what you can do is when you're super gliding, you can do a tap strafe just like you are on the ground. It's the exact same concept. You're letting off all your keys midair and just holding down your crouch if you want, if you want to continue sliding out. 
do not continue holding space. If you do a super guard and you hold down space, you will not be able to jump or b-hop or lurch or anything. It'll hold that down and kind of mess you up. So keep that in mind. So now we're going to move on to some sideways super glide stuff. Um, all you got to do to do a sideways super glide is when you're at the top of your climb, you're going to let off your W key and switch to a side input A or D. So if I want to go left, I'm going to hold down my A key just like that. And if I want to go right, I'll hold down my D key just like that and go flying away. Um, it's very easy to do them and it's just like a normal super glide. It's the exact same thing. Like I said, you're just letting off your W key, which is probably the hardest part about learning movement in this game is learning to let off W because I feel like that's my problem. I always held down W and just had no idea what I was doing. But again, that's how you do a sideways glide. And we'll move on to the next thing. Now that we've learned tap strafe super glide and sideways super glides, we can chain stuff together now to do a lot more variations of super gliding. One of those variations being one of the super glides that I do the most, which is kind of like one that I'm known for doing, and it's like an L super glide. Um, it's when you do a sideways super glide, right? You do a sideways super glide, and as you're wanting to tap straight forward, you'll let off all your keys and just scroll forward, just like that. And you can do it either way, you know, sideways super glide off to the right, and then tap straight forward. And you can kind of delay the super glide too. So if you do like a sideways glide, then like wait a second and then tap straight forward, it'll kind of delay it and throw off your enemy so you know say you want to like fling yourself out and fling yourself back in you can do some crazy stuff like that okay, so now we're gonna learn a backwards super glide and i know a lot of you guys are questioning how i do that and probably the one thing that gets me called a config player like more than anything because people just do not understand that i can do that legitly it's actually really easy to do um all you got to do is when you're climbing up your thing you're doing a sideways super glide but as you're going to super glide you're gonna hit down s and your super glide all at the same time so you can go backwards you want to do you're still holding down a side input then you're hitting down s and your super guide input all at the same time so you can redirect all right we're gonna wrap it up with the super guide stuff for a little bit uh i'll probably bounce back to it here and there um if i find some other examples or other uses of super glide that i don't think of right now that is used in another type of movement um but we're gonna move into some wall bound stuff, which is very basic tech. And if you guys don't know wall jumping, it's probably one of the most useful things because you can tap strafe, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff out of a wall jump. Um, to do a wall jump, all you gotta do is a slide jump. And once you have jumped, you wanna let off of everything, aim at the wall pretty much to, to throw your body into. You kinda wanna grab onto the wall and make sure you're holding a side input. You wanna let off of everything except a side input that you're following with. So. I'm following this wall with A when I go left and say I'm going this way, I'll hold it with B. And what you can do is if you do the slide jump and then grab onto it with A, you can kind of wall run the, the wall jump. And that's pretty much what a wall wall jump is, is like you're just grabbing onto the wall and kind of just climbing it and then just jumping off the wall. It's very weird how this works, but very simple to do. And if you get very good habits with holding down that side input and letting off of everything else, you can do it on shorter objects like this. If I can, I think I can do it off this. So I'll do this. See, just like that. See how low this object is and I'm hitting a, a, a wall jump off of it? You kind of have to time it so you can like delay it and just launch yourself right off of it. Basic wall jump. Um, so now onto some wall jump tap strafe stuff. I'm not going to go over this too much because it's really easy to do. Um, all you got to do is just a basic wall jump, let off all your keys after you've made the contact with the wall, and you can essentially just tap strafe wherever you're turning and tap strafing to. Um, you can really throw it into some, some crazy stuff. I love love doing it i also love doing like something like this here let me let me stim reset where i do like a little like 360 and then wall jump it you can do some fancy stuff and really be creative with wall jumping so once you have your basic wall jumps down we're gonna go into fatigue jumping uh fatigue jumping is a little bit easier than a wall jump in my opinion once you get it on lock it's actually more useful and you can use it in more versatile ways um so what you're gonna do is you're gonna stay next to the wall that you want to do a fatigue jump on you're gonna jump next to it. You wanna make sure you have jumped or say that you've, you know, jumped off right here. Right here. Now that I'm in jump fatigue, that's what I, I've pretty much done. You're gonna run into the wall with W and you're gonna jump and then let off of W and hold a side input. So I'm gonna jump, I'm in jump fatigue, walk into the wall, let off of W once I've kind of walked into the wall, hold D so I grab onto the wall and then I can do a wall jump just like that. So then you can just keep doing wall jumps and you're just going to keep kind of going back and forth the way that you normally wall jump and you can just keep chaining it. Remember, you're just running into the wall with W or like holding W and jumping and you're letting off of the W key as you're hitting the wall. So like I'm jumping, letting off W, holding a side input. Like I'm, I'm not holding W as I hit the wall. I think you still can. It's not going to. Yeah, you don't really get the proper like wall jump though. 
it's, it's really weird. Let me see. Yeah, like you can still kind of. It's not the proper thing. You just want to make sure you're letting off. Let, let off W. Make sure you're letting off W because you see how weird those are. Uh, what's really important uh, about fatigue jumping with me is that when you're fatigue jumping, you don't lose the ability to super glide. So with a super glide, it's technically counting as a slide because you are hitting crouch um, and it's activating as a slide. So what I'm saying is when you do a, a wall jump, you've already done a slide and then you try to super glide and it won't let you because you've already done it. It's going to give you a dead super glide. It's going to give you something like that where you don't really go anywhere. So what's so good about fatigue jumping is that you can do a fatigue jump and go right into a super glide. There's absolutely no delay or no slide cancel or anything that you have to worry about. You'll be able to just go right up into it and super glide right out of it. And you can do some really fun stuff. So you can do like a fatigue jump and go into this window that's super glide over here. You can really mess around with how fatigue jumping works. It's so fun. All right, now we're gonna move on to some zipline techs, and this personally isn't my strong suit of movement. I'm really bad on ziplines, but I do know a couple things, and I'm consistent at them. Uh, number one, this is a basic one. Everybody knows this one, and this is one that you probably should know if you're a basic player or a new player. All you gotta do is do a E and scroll down at the same time, and you will launch yourself. Remember, scroll down is our jump. If you guys made sure to find that at the beginning of the video, make sure your scroll down is jump, and your scroll up is tap strafe. And what you can do is, if you do that, you can actually tap strafe that. If you do a, like, zip jump into the wall, like that. And then you can just use your scroll wheel, let off all your inputs, and just tap strafe. I'm literally letting off every key when I tap strafe, by the way. Like, I'm never heading any key. You can also hold down crouch after you've done this. You can hold down crouch and slide it out just like that. But yeah, zip jumping, very easy. You can do it off pathy zip lines, like, uh, right here, for example. Let me go over here. So you can do it just perfectly off this. You can just launch yourself up in the air. Say I want to get up on there. I can just, like launch myself and tap straight forward and barely get up there and but yeah that's uh that's zip jumping all right now that we're done with that one we're gonna move into something that kind of ties with the same zip jump type thing um and that's a lead jumping it's pretty much the same premise but all we're gonna be doing is uh we're gonna be sliding from about 10 feet away and doing a slow turn like this and looking straight down and then once you kind of fall off the lip of this ledge and you need to find a zip line just like this all you're gonna do is do the exact same zip jump type thing and you'll go straight upwards. I messed it up right there. I messed it up right there too. Let me try to get one. Good. What the heck? Just like that. I don't know why it's taking me absolutely forever to, to do these. There we go. I'm hitting them. Elite jumping itself really isn't the most useful of techs, but it ties into yet another tech and that is mantle jumping, which mantle jumping is probably one of the most popular techs that's came out in the last year i think it's probably been like eight months since it got super popular um i'm not the best at explaining this i'm gonna do it myself and then i will have a link in the description for two goaded zipline players and that is Triri. you guys probably have heard of him and excusia he's another underrated goaded demonic zipline player i don't know these guys just flick around like absolute just crackheads that have snorted 17 lines of g fuel and snake venom it's unbelievable to do a mantle jump all you gotta do is go up a zip line and you're gonna kind of go into this position right here and practice just demantling you want to go up the zip line get into this and hitting s right you're gonna go up get into this hit s and then what you want to do after that is when you get into this um you want to hit s and immediately want to look down just a tiny tiny bit or even a little bit more if you want to or a decent amount or even look up if you want and then you want to do a zip jump or an elite jump essentially the exact same thing so you're gonna go up here demantle and then elite jump all extremely fast you're gonna do this that and you're gonna be able to launch yourself forward it's kind of a weird tech to do i taught one of my irl friends who's played this game for probably 20 hours how to do this in five minutes and he has them consistent now. If my IRL friend can learn this in five minutes, and I'm not even kidding, he's actually doing this consistently now. Every time he gets in the game, he's like hyped to do them. Um, and that and both both that and super guides. I've taught him both super fast. Um, so I'm hoping you guys can can learn off what I'm saying and don't need the keyboard overlay. Like I'm really hoping because I know that's probably something that's bugging some of you guys. Like I wish you had the keyboard overlay. But again, to do a mantle jump, you're gonna go up the zip line, you're gonna mantle, demantle look down and do an elite jump all super fast don't don't do it at the bottom of the zip line like i just did you're gonna do it all really fast and you're gonna launch yourself and you can also super glide off a mantle jump like that see what i'm doing you can do some crazy stuff okay we're gonna be moving on to the last part of this video and that is the lord strafing i have some other stuff that i'm gonna be explaining but i'm gonna have it in a part two video of how to do movement 
we're gonna explain like how to use it in proper fighting situations and stuff i'm gonna have more gameplay clips instead of me just sitting in the range just explaining in details how to do movement so look forward to that it's gonna be an extremely detailed video i'm gonna do it more in depth than this video so as much as I want to explain the lurch strafing stuff, I truly just can't without a keyboard overlay. I can't truly show you guys what I'm doing or slow anything down and just help you guys like fully understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you guys off to Zeto's movement tutorial where he explains lurch strafing and everything super just in detail. He has diagrams and everything. So I'm going to send you off to that. Zeto appreciate it in advance for letting me use this footage. Thank you so much. You were an absolute demon insanely talented i can't say enough kind words about him zeto thank you so much i might not even be in contact with you before i use your footage so please don't get mad at me shout out to zeto show him some love please i'm gonna give all of his socials down in the description go check him out love you guys and this will be my goodbye peace enjoy the rest of the video let's just jump into this by dissecting lurch strafing by the two words involved lurch and strafe lurching is the action of using your directional keys wasd to shift your hitbox around after a jump you're able to do this as soon as your feet are off the ground and precise action timing is crucial to the movement because if you misclick or miss your lurching window you will not perform the action you want lurching on its own is very slow and i consider it old age because of that fact strafing in this instance is a double entendre one meaning to dodge and two meaning to tap strafe every apex player alive knows what tap strafing is so i don't have to go over this in detail but if you still don't know what tap strafing is, here's a resource from Milky Sniper. I consider this the middle age of dodging because although tap strafing is faster than lurching, you have to turn your crosshair away from your enemy, taking, taking away opportunity for you to actually shoot your opponent. I would like to add redirecting as an honorable mention in the middle age. There was a time in Apex where tap strafing was rumored to be removed. This actually happened twice, so I'm talking about the very first time. Our second important piece of information will help you understand the action timings of our lurch stacks. To start every combination, we have a start, a push, and a roll key. The start key is the input or inputs that you initially jump off of. The push key is the next input or inputs used to keep momentum during the stack. Finally, our roll key or keys are the inputs we roll our momentum towards completing our lurch stack. Using a left to right RAS single strafe as an example, our start key is A, our push key is W, and our roll keys are D, tap strafe S. This formula holds true to any lurch stack, clockwise or counterclockwise. All right, now let's get into some lurch stacks because pressing the buttons is like the easiest thing to do. Starting off with the RAS strafe, very fundamental, very basic, very easy to do. Here's the double tap strafe res. It's more or less gonna send you back to where you started. So instead of going into like a complete circle where you end up on like the left side or right side, you're gonna you're gonna end up where you started. So this single tap strafe Yuki, I put an asterisk around because technically this isn't the official Yuki, but it starts off with the same button combinations, and since they're two key presses instead of one. Um, so I categorize it as Yuki. Here we have the real Yuki strafe, which is the double tap strafe version. And with the real Yuki, you're quickly changing your momentum in the air. So you're going like top left, top right, and then you're like slanting back left. And then if you're starting from your right side, you're going top right, top left, and slanting back to your right side. And here's the pito strafe. It's a lot more useful when you're crouching. Because when you crouch in pito strafe, you produce like this little funny hitbox. And the funny hitbox is what makes it worth. Um, I didn't really want to add these side lurches as their own lurch combos because on their own they're really dry and they don't really do too much for you. But you can use it after you like rash strafe into a crouch and you jump. You can use this combo, the A S D tap strafe or the D S A tap strafe to jerk left side or right side um, after your crouch jump. 
Bunny hopping is just the act of pressing jump the second you hit the ground. Recap on combining lurches together. You can crouch, which produces a slide. You can do a left to right shake, DSA or ASD, or you can bunny hop. Those are at least my main three. All right now I'm gonna show you what lurching like over a wall looks like. I use this a lot every time I wall bounce or fatigue bounce. So it's basically like lurching on the ground. And again, I want to reiterate like why this is so good. Because if I weren't if I weren't to be lurching right now, I would have to turn my crosshair away. Right? I, I would have to turn my crosshair away from my enemy. But with this technique that I'm doing to lurch strafe, I'm allowing myself to keep my crosshair directly in front of me instead of having to turn all the way left. If I wanted to tap strafe, I would just I would have to turn my camera all the way left and then snap back onto him. But that snapback takes away so much time and target acquisition that it's just not healthy. Here I'm using S A up scroll or S D up scroll to just get on top of the, the platform. Very useful because I don't have to like put my gun away to climb. I'm just instantly up there and my gun is up so I can shoot on the way up. And here I'm showing you know, just the same thing. Lurch strafing is just a lot better than tap strafing because you can actually keep your crosshair on target. Here we're using super guiding as an example. We're able to redirect our super guide momentum to either go forward, to the side, backwards, you know, whatever we really want. And this is also what Lemon does. And if you know if you don't know who Lemonhead is, he is a really good octane, and he's also really good at lurching. As you can see, this is how he does his famous super glides. And I'm also going to show you what it looks like on Wraith. Again, lurch strafing is usable on any character. Now, preferably small ones because, you know, a big hitbox is a big hitbox, but it's possible on anybody. Some common mistakes that you might run into is one, misclicking. It's very easy to believe in a moment that you're you know, clicking the right buttons at the right time. But I recommend getting a keyboard overlay and either recording yourself, or, you know, whether you record or you stream, having a keyboard overlay is pretty beneficial so that you can you know, see and catch yourself you know, at the time you were making your mistake. Our second most common mistake is timing. Uh, the lurch window is very small. And you know if you misclick or you miss your timing, you're just gonna go nowhere. And you're just gonna flat out go nowhere and just get beamed. Um, something to help you like remember the timing is that, that my movement is at a constant, right? Time continues to flow. Don't get too dilated or like or like zoomed in on aiming at your target or you know, even or even like making sure you're pressing the button right. Everything has to come naturally, right? If you get too focused or overly focused on something, you're either gonna miss your window or you're gonna be too early. You know, it's that anxiety that kind of builds up. So just let it come natural. And like I said earlier, having a keyboard having a keyboard overlay really does help. All right, OD lurching. What I mean by OD lurching is just lurching constantly all the time. This isn't a good thing because one, you exhaust your movement while doing these lurches. So if you just keep on lurching back to back to back, you're gonna one, go nowhere. And two, you know, you're, you're not gonna have any movement or speed to shift. So your lurches are gonna be really weak. All right, number four, gunplay. When you're lurching on somebody, you mainly want to be using a point and click gun, whether it's a PK, whether it's a wingman, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know, longbow, whatever you want to use. Just because of the fact that hip fire accuracy got, got nerfed. I don't know if it was this season or a couple seasons ago, but it's just a lot harder to 100 to 0 somebody. And then number five, recognizing movement penalties. So you guys know that whenever you, whenever you get shot, Remember you get shot, you can't immediately slide or you get slowed down, right? And then you, you, you're caused a dead slide. We talked earlier about how momentum is what you need to have a strong lurch. But when you get shot or move and penalized and then you try to jump in the air and lurch, you're not gonna have any momentum to move. So take an extra second to AD strafe or regain your momentum back before you start doing your combos. Cause if not, you know, you're not gonna be going anywhere. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. If you ever want to see me play live, I, I'm going to drop my socials in the description. And yeah, I hope this helped you.
Peace.